Section 4.2 is on angles of triangles. The triangle sum theorem says that the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is 180. You may be familiar with this, that all of the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So given triangle ABC, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C equals 180, no matter what kind of triangle it is. So here's an example. Let's find the measure of each numbered angle. And we don't always have to necessarily go in numerical order. So for example, I'm not going to start necessarily with angle number one. I'm going to look for one that looks kind of easy to figure out. I'm thinking, actually I'm looking at this triangle right here on the right, and I'm seeing that it has a 58 degrees and a 65 degrees and angle four. So the measure of angle four plus 65 plus 58 equals 180. <clears throat> and doing the subtraction, the measure of angle 4 is equal to 57. And I think it actually might help me if I go ahead and write that in there. So that one's 57 degrees. Okay. Well, right away I'm noticing that angle 4 and angle 5 are vertical angles. So actually I'll go ahead and write that in there. Angle 5 is also 57 degrees. That might be helpful later on. Okay. Now, another thing I'm noticing is that, let's see, uh, I can find the measure of angle 6 in this triangle over here. So the measure of angle 6 plus 67 plus 57 equals 180. And again, doing the subtraction, the measure of angle 6 equals 56. I'll go ahead and put that in my diagram. And what else do I know? I think I need, I need angle 3. Notice that angle 3 is supplementary with angle 4. It's also supplementary with angle 5. So if I do the measure of angle 3, plus 57, that's going to equal 180 because they're supplementary. And the measure of angle 3, doing the subtraction, is 123. I'll go ahead and put that in my picture. Now notice the triangle on the bottom, uh, triangle ABC, is actually an isosceles triangle because angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So I can say uh, two times the measure of either one, the measure of angle one, since angle one, actually let me say something first. Since the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two, I can say that two times the measure of angle one plus 123 equals 180. Again, since one and two are equal to each other, I can just double one of them add it to 123 and get 180. So the measure of angle 1 is the same as the measure of angle 2, which doing the subtraction gives me, oh it actually does give me a decimal, 28.5 degrees. Now let's take a look at this bonus question here. Oh, maybe I'll go ahead and put that in there. So 28.5 degrees, 28.5 degrees, and let's take a look at our bonus question. Is AD parallel to B BE? So in other words, is this line parallel to this line? Notice I have two possible transversals here. I'm going to take a look at DB. So AD and BE would be parallel lines cut by this transversal right here. And if the lines are parallel, then angle 6 would have to be congruent to 65. And it is not. So no, they're not parallel because the measure of angle 6 is not equal to 65 degrees. In order for the lines to be parallel, those alternate interior angles would have to be congruent. That's just a little bonus problem. Okay, so <clears throat> take, take a triangle, triangle ABC, and extend one side. To me, it kind of looks like a triangle that has a tail. 
This angle that's created when you extend one side is called an exterior angle. It's the angle that's outside the triangle. Angles 1, 2, and 3 are all in the interior of the triangle, but angle 4 is an angle that's created when you extend that one side and it's outside the triangle. Angles 1 and 2, in this case, are called remote interior angles. They are the two angles that do not form a linear pair with the exterior angle. Here's how I like to think about it. So if angle 4 is sitting out here outside of the triangle, angles 1 and 2 are the two interior angles that are the farthest away or the most remote from angle 4. So again, 1 and 2 are called remote interior angles. And so we have the exterior angle theorem. It says that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles. In other words, the measure of angle 4, this is my exterior angle, is equal to the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, because those are my two remote interior angles. And we can actually prove that pretty easily. I'm not going to take the time to do that here. So let's try an example here that uses the exterior angle theorem. So this angle out here that's marked 2x minus 48 degrees is an exterior angle, and this 32 degree angle and this angle measured uh, labeled x are my two remote interiors. So I know that the sum of the two remote interior angles is equal to the measure of the exterior angle. And solving this for x, I get x equals 80. So the measure of that angle, the measure of x is 80 degrees. <clears throat> Here's a couple corollaries from the triangle sum theorem. A corollary is a little statement, very simple, kind of basic, that kind of necessarily follows from a theorem. It's kind of like a theorem. Um, we don't actually take the time to prove them. So, the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. So here's triangle ABC, and it's a right triangle. What this corollary says is that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals 90 degrees. And that makes sense, because all three of these angles have to add up to 180, and if I were to take away angle C, which is 90, the other two would have to add up to 90. Second corollary says there can be at most one obtuse angle in a triangle. So if you have a triangle, only one of the angles, in this case it's angle C, only one of the angles can be obtuse. And that makes sense also because, remember, obtuse means greater than 90. So if this angle is greater than 90, let's say it's 100, okay, I can't have, or even if it's 91 degrees, just a little bit more than a right angle, then I can't have another 91 degree angle in this triangle because that would add up to 182, and that won't make a triangle. So that means if angle C is an obtuse angle, then the measure of angle A must be less than 90, and the measure of angle B must be less than 90. And let's take a look at this example. So using the triangle sum theorem and the exterior angle theorem, let's find the measure of each numbered angle in this diagram. And again, I'm not necessarily going to go in any particular or numerical order. I'm just going to kind of do what makes sense. However, maybe it does actually make sense to do... Oh no, let's take a look at this triangle here, the one on the bottom, kind of the bottom right here. I have a 38 degree angle and a 90 degree angle. So the measure of angle 2 plus 38 plus 90 equals 180 because those three angles have to add up to 180. So doing the subtraction, the measure of angle 2 equals 52 degrees. And I think I'll go ahead and put that in there. Oh, I don't like that. That's a little too small. I'll do it in green. So this one here is 52 degrees. Next, I'm noticing that angle 2 and angle 3 together make a right angle. So I can say the measure of angle 3 plus 52 equals 90. So the measure of angle 3 is going to be 38. And I'll add that to my picture. 
and kind of working my way around, I see another right triangle here. Okay, um, so the measure of angle 4 plus 38 is going to, well, let's see. Actually, I could do it that way. I could, that would be the triangle or the um, corollary about the right triangle, that 4 and 38 would equal 90, but let's go ahead and do it a little bit easier. 4 plus 38 plus 90, that might make a little more sense equals 180, so the three angles in that triangle add up to 180. So the measure of angle 4 is equal to 52. Are you seeing a lot of 52's and 38's? And then over here the measure of angle 1 plus this 52 degree angle plus this angle right here is also going to be 90 equals 180 so the measure of angle 1 is also equal to 38 <clears throat> and here's a really interesting picture let's find the measure of each numbered angle in this one so I'm not seeing any triangles that have all three or that have two of the three angles in there. But I am noticing <clears throat> that angle one out here, which is actually outside the triangle, is an exterior angle for this small triangle on top. Do you see that? If we were to take this triangle here and extend this side out, it creates angle one. So angle one is an exterior angle, and 32 and 38 are my two remote interior angles. So the measure of my exterior angle, angle 1, is equal to the measure of my two remote interior angles, or 70 degrees. And I think I'm going to go ahead and mark that, that that's a 70 degree angle out there. Now I can use the fact that 1 and 2 form a linear pair, so the measure of angle 2 plus 70, and remember a linear pair is supplementary, so they add up to 180. So the measure of angle 2 is going to be 110. Okay, and let's see what else I can do here. <clears throat> so the measure of angle 3, oh, actually I can do some vertical angles as well. So this angle here is also 70 degrees. So looking at this triangle in the middle here, okay, those add up to 180. So the measure of angle 3 plus 70 plus 64 equals 180. So the measure of angle 3 is going to be 46. And I think I'll go ahead and mark that in my picture. Now I see that this 32 degree angle, angle 3 which is 46, and angle 4 which I don't know, actually form a straight line. So they are going to add up to 180. So the measure of angle 4 plus 46 plus 32 equals 180. So doing the subtraction, the measure of angle 4 is equal to 102. And my last angle I need to find is the measure of angle 5. And looking at this triangle here, I know that the measure of angle 5 plus 102 plus 41 equals 180. And again, doing the subtraction, the measure of angle 5 ends up being 37. So there's a lot of different ways you can solve this sort of problem. Um, you can use exterior angles, you can use the triangle sum theorem that they add up to 180, you can use vertical angles, linear pair, uh, it isn't really officially a linear triple, but uh, you know any number of angles that make up a straight line add up to 180 as well.